Dear friends, it's a great pleasure for me to participate in this Naso Sun Association uh, journey webinars. And I'm going to talk about segments of preservation rhinoplasty and the way we address the dorsum by using the Tetris concept. Whenever I talk about these conservative approaches to the dorsum, I always thank to this brilliant man, Dr. Wilson Daves, uh, that taught me when I spent some time with him, 2007, 8, um, the concepts, different concepts, how to approach the dorsum. And um, till then, I only knew uh, how to approach the dorsum in a structural way, in a classic uh, way. But then this philosophy really changes your life. And um, Rolly and Daniel came with this preservation rhinoplasty concept, putting together not only preserving the dorsum, but also preserving the cartilages, uh, tip cartilages, and the way you address the soft tissues. And the, the, recently the discussion is, is not about um, open or closed as it used to be, but it's especially in between do you preserve or do you structure the nose. It's very interesting and it shows how, how this pendulum effect is powerful. Uh, but it's also great because you put a lot of people thinking on the same subject and there's a flux of new ideas, but we shouldn't forget that there's always a dark side of the moon and, and I'll talk about that in my presentation. Um, uh, whenever we jump into a new uh, technique or a new concept, you, we need to know that there's a dark side of the moon. And um, this is not one concept. This is, it seems like millions of concepts inside of one concept uh, because there's a lot of different perspectives and different possibilities, you know, to start doing preservation. And with that, there's this first question for, for, for the beginners in, in the field, that is, how should I begin? Um, uh, low approach, uh, high approach, intermediate approach, Tetris approach, as I'm going to talk about, should I do foundation, should I do uh, uh, surface techniques? And I want to invite you to read this journal um, where I was, um, uh, and I, I, was, I had the honor to be the guest uh, editor putting together uh, many, uh, many surgeons that dedicate mainly to, to preservation like Yves Saban, Goxel, uh, Badish, uh, you name it. Um, and um, recently also Ferreira and, and Toriyumi, they, they, they came with this, with this article trying to, in fact, to organize ideas uh, in, in dorsal preservation. So we have here in this definition the foundation techniques, which is based on light down and, and push down techniques, and then you have the surface techniques. The way I see it, or the way I used to do it, for me, I like to do full preservation because I tried almost everything, but for me it makes sense that if I'm preserving, I want to preserve the continuity. I want to preserve the continuity in between bone and cartilage because this is what makes sense to me about preservation because it's where the patients where they touch the nose and where the problems generally appear when, when we do dorsal uh, rhinoplasty and so talking about type A or type B or one or two I do both because I like to do let down I do let down in most of my cases when I do preservation but then I do in 95% of my cases, I do some modulation, so I do some resurfacing techniques also. So I do kind of both. I put the nose in the position I want, and then I just cup it to, to, to see what I want to see in the end of the surgery. Regarding the approach to, to uh, what kind of foundation technique I use, I, if I can, I do intermediate approach, immediate strip approach, um, and spe specifically the Tetris approach, which I think is the most stable technique that I do. But if the nose is really crooked, if the septum is really deviated, I go and I do the low strip, which is really powerful to correct these deviations. Uh, I like to think that w one of the most important things that the patient sees this line, this eyebrow tip line, and then they touch the surface. And so when they come to you and they say, they say, I have two different profiles. 
they 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 are not saying to different profiles. They they are saying I have to different three quarters view because this is what they see, and they call it the profiles. And so for me, because they see mainly this uh, eyebrow tip line continuity, and they populate the the surface of of the dorsum, the, this dorsal platform. I like to think that I want to preserve what stays in between these two eyebrow tip lines. And so based on that, uh, I preserve this and I work at the lateral wall. And the work that I do in the lateral wall, and here specifically the let down, uh, I don't see that as a problem for the patients. Even for us, we palpate the nose after doing the, uh, the let down and after doing the um, the lateral keystone area, this articulation, and we don't palpate what happened in the surgery. In the contrary, if you do surgery at the surface, you always palpate. Uh, most of the times it's not visible, it's true, but I would say that 100% of the times you palpate that there was surgery before. But the bottom line here should be that the technique should not be a limitation to the desired result. So I don't try to do this technique in every nose. I look to the nose and I try to apply the best technique in my hands that, that work in my hands and based on that choose the technique that produces the best result in your hands. Okay, so to understand just in a very easy way this push let down maneuver, um, if you think about this line of the dorsum, it's high, so just push it down. Okay, by pushing it down you have the, the, the dorsum in a lower position. Okay, but by doing that, sometimes you kept this format of this convexity or at least some convexity of, of the dorsum. Um, and this convexity of the dorsum gives you some residual hump and sometimes some depressions at the radix or eventually at the, the super tip area. And so I like to think that we should have two pillars, the cephalic pillar, the caudal pillar, and then we need to have a counteracting force to say to this when you know where the spring effect, because the nose, the, the, this con convexity, uh, it wants to come back again. So we need to put a counteracting force to say, stay there and uh, avoiding some relapses of the hump. And the Tetris is something that gives you that. Um, what is the Tetris? The Tetris is an evolution of the intermediate strip approach. So this approach to the, to, to the septum in the, in, in the midway, uh, um, evolved to this, it seems a bit more complicated, but in, in fact it is not. The difference between the two is that instead of, you know, go with this cut to the caudal border, I just preserve a natural strut and by, by, by doing that you create like kind of a block that fits in, the, in this perfect, you know, spot and by doing that it, it resembles the Tetris. And you know that we have these three uh, approaches to the septum. So the A is the low strip approach, popularized by, by Katzel. The B is the high strip approach, popularized by Saban, Gola Saban. And the C, which is what I like to do, uh, is the idea is to keep some cartilage up there so I can suture it in the end of the sur surgery. And I feel, at least in my hands, to have this counteracting force at the, the rhenium. I feel that I can control better the final result. But as I said, when we jump into these new techniques, we need to think that there is some dark side of the moon. And because there this dark side, these drawbacks and stigmatas, uh, we need to avoid them. And to avoid this, uh, and if we look to the profile uh, view drawbacks, these hump recurrences or residual humps, these radic steps, the super tip settling some opening of uh, and, and especially in, 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 the, in the cartilaginous uh, third of, of, of the dorsum. So if we look to this, we need to think about this process not as a unit, bringing it down as a unit, but per segment. And that's why I like to call it the segmental preservation rhinoplasty. And let me show you some of my surgical strategies to achieve these goals. Okay, thinking about the lateral walls. The lateral walls, in both walls, I do let down and I do lateral keystone area. This is disarticulation or lateral split or the ballerina maneuver. 
And I do that in 99% of my cases. Okay, there's no 100%, but probably I'm, I'm almost, you know, reaching 100% of my, the cases when I do preservation rhinoplasty, of course. So what is the letdown? So push down is where is when you don't remove any piece of bone in the lateral wall and you just impact the pyramid. And because the pyramid is narrower up there, it, it, it just fits in the basal part of, of, of the nose. But you are impact, in, impacting or do an impaction of bone inside the nasal airway. So that's why I don't like to do it. I rather prefer to, like we do in let down, we remove a piece of bone, we create a space, and then the lateral wall, for me, is a facilitator. The lateral wall uh, 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 allows that the pyramid goes down and then the septum decides where the nose uh, will end up. In this video, you see that in right side, I removed a fragment of bone, and by doing the impaction, you see there's there's no bone inside the nasal cavity, but in the left side, I did a push down, so I didn't remove bone, and you see that the, mo the bone is inside the, the nasal cavity. And again, you see that in right side, let down uh, the, 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 the bone, did, they don't touch because it's narrower, but there's no bone bone inside the nasal cavity. Here you see I'm using the piezo, I'm doing the transverse osteotomies, and then you do two, uh, two uh, basal or two um, lateral um, osteotomies, and you define exactly the amount of bone that you want to remove, but the goal is I want to have the pyramid free. Can I do it uh, without a uh, piezo or in closed approach? Of course you can. Here I'm using a saw, a task and track your saw, but you can use even osteotomes. Uh, you see that this saw does a beautiful cut. And then I'm using the corner of the osteotome. I call it the meso, which is that micro-edged specific osteotomy. And by doing that, uh, you create a line at the bone and you pass once, twice, three times if necessary and the bone cracks and you see that the peri osteum is preserved. Then you pass again, then you pass again and you just remove the piece of bone exactly like it is done in the piezo. And look inside, you see the periosteum and the vessels, they are preserved. One question that you know, fellows and visitors, they do a lot is, Carlos, how do you control the amount of bone that you remove? I don't care because if you, I remove a bigger edge, the space in between is like the push down, the bone doesn't touch. And here, if you leave some space in between the bone, what I found is that, and, and I believe it's by preserving the periosteum, and in some cases that I revised, that I did one year before, you see that there's some new bone in between this, this the, the, or in the space that I left in the previous surgery. And this new whitish bone uh, is, is filling that space. And when you palpate laterally, you feel nothing. And when you move the bone, it's really stable. So... I don't believe there's a problem if you leave some, some gap there. What about the lateral keystone area of the articulation? Why is that? Why is it necessary? Because when we want to flex the nose, when we want to get rid of this convexity, if we don't create this flexibility, especially at the base of the nose, it doesn't lose this curvature. So we need to create this movement, movement as you see here. So I need to separate the bone from soft tissues as you can see here, and by doing that, look at this movement, look at it opens. Look, the more basal, the more it opens, it's logical. And by doing that, look at the, the, the dorsal line, it gets more uh, uh, flat. Okay, so surgical strategies of the middle wall. And now I'm talking about the Tetris concept. As I said, it started as an intermediate approach and then this is a variation of intermediate approach. So what I do is I define a block in between the highest point of the hump and the caudal border of the upper laterals. And then I remove the excess of septum. And this excess, re excess represents exactly the amount of the projection that I want for my dorsum. And by removing that, you just suture it in the new position and you have the new position of your dorsum. It's very easy. The concept is very easy to, to understand. Let's see that in this video. So I 
marked my block and then I'm marking the excess of cartilage that I want to get rid of. And I'm removing it and of course I need to create a space here and I'll talk about that later because I want this the pyramid to come down, the bony pyramid to come down. And this is the movement, okay? You just, uh, you just adjust the dorsal line to its new position. If I want to remove more, I can, of course, and I need to adjust this piece there. Okay, this is handcrafting. Okay, so I adjust, I remove the excess, and this is the first suture. This is, it resembles like a mini cutsel because I do the suture to the septum here, in the, the anterior nasal spine here, I do exactly that point. And you see, this is the residual hump. That's why I think when we do this, the cuddle, we have more residual humps because we have one suture here, but there's no contracting forces here. So that's why for me, putting this counteracting force below the rhenium is so important as I'm, I'm doing here, making it faster. And you see, you see how stable it is now. And so by doing that, I have this three point stability. I have the stability below the rhenium. I have a stability at the preserved septum at the caudal part, and I have the radix stable, and I'm talking about the radix in a few minutes. So in this video, I'm showing you the first stitch. Sometimes I stop below the rhenium, I'll show you later. But I'm passing a, a eight figure suture, and now I'm circular one. I, I used to call it an AT figure uh, uh, suture. And then you suture it up there, and you end up with this caudal cut, very stable. Sometimes, as in the video, I'm starting from um, below the, the rhenium. I can include the contralateral mucosa in perichondrium to give me more stability, as you can see here. Then I cut the excess of, of the caudal septum, of course, and then I stabilize it. And by doing that, I have two axes stabilizing the, the old structure. That's why I think, at my hands at least, this is a more stable approach or to the septum that we have in preservation, uh, uh, preservation rhinoplasty. Look at that. In the end, I'm, I'm hitting, deviating the, the pyramid and it's really stable after the surgery, as you can see here. Okay, can I harvest some cartilage? Of course you can, because you have an L-shaped uh, uh, structures uh, stable, so below that, and it's not only the septum or isolated septum, it's septum with cartilage and bone, everything together, and lateral cartilage, upper lateral cartilages, all together, and it's really, really stable. Sometimes we have some residual humps at the cartilage, and because of that, we can be creative and we can split the, the block by doing this, and it's really, it's really uh, strong what we can achieve uh, with that. The lateral tattoos, what, it, what is the lateral tattoos? In some cases, you have some deviation of the axis of the nose. And by, by position the, the, the block in the control, contralateral side of the deviation, like uh, you see here, you don't remove cartilage, but you have even a, a more stable uh, situation when you do the, this, this, this repositioning of, of the block in the control, contralateral side of, of the septum. Um, let me show in that video, what we do is, we do this, we put this in the other side and we suture it in the other side of, of the septum and by doing that we have the septum straight. Don't do this in straight, uh, um, in straight septums. And here you can see this deviation of the axis was corrected by doing this. The same way you can do uh, uh, some um, harvesting, as I said, in the previous surgery. This is another example uh, that I did the later, uh, lateral uh, Tetris. Uh, and here you see the of view, and here you see the lateral view. In this case, what was done was I split uh, the, the, the block, and because the, the pyramid was curved, I put one flap in one side, another flap in the other side, and you see that it solved um, the problem. It's straight now, three quarters view, lateral view. In a man, the same concept, and it's, it's very stable. In cases like um, uh, there's a really deviation 
of the pyramid, crooked pyramid, crooked nose. I like to do the low approach, the spar, which is described by Wilson Daves. Uh, you, can, you can see it in this meeting um, by him. And what is really important is to stabilize the base, as you can see here. And this is an example of the spar. You can use the same concepts of the segmental preservation run all, all of the others except the, the approach the approach to, to, to the septum, and here you see the same thing in this girl. The radix control, as I said, be careful with the radix, keep this pillar intact, and when you cut it, cut it thinking that uh, below the highest point of, 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 of the, the mobile pyramid, you need to have some bone below. So I like to do this trick, which I call the pivotal point, when I press the, the rhenium, the radix go up and then you can come down or cut down the septum till the level that you, you, you need or you want. And this is a safety net that for those who do that, it's really important. In this case, I left the bone in a higher position so you can eventually bring the septum or the radix up. Avoid this. This is a case that I did and ended up to put a DCF graft because I lost completely the control of, of, of the, 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 the radix. And as I said, you can control the super tip area by doing this because you preserve this cartilage and then you just cut it. And to end it, um, just some refinements. I do a lot of osteoplasty. That I said that I do a lot of uh, resurfacing uh, things to, to, the, to, the, to the pyramid. So I like birds. I, I, I use mainly birds to the to the dorsal platform, but also to the lateral walls. I learned it from Emre Elam. And so you can see here that by using this, you can make it really smooth, the transition, so you don't palpate it. Sometimes you can use in broad noses, the pyramid in osteotomies, like in that case, look how broad it was and look how thin it is in the end of the surgery. Another example. So this is a segmental preservation rhinoplasty. We think about segments and yes, it's, it's, I would say it's almost kind of a magic thing and it's, it's very preservative, it's very nat natural, it's really, really stable, as I said, the results, the way you touch the nose is like an unoperated nose. Um, it, it really heals, I think it heals faster, this is one, one week after surgery, you can use it for big, big humps. Sometimes people th say, oh, in smaller humps it can work, but in bigger humps, this is almost then 10 millimeters, the projection, and you see how it, it, it was performed. This is immediate results. This is, uh, um, this is the, um, one week post-op. You see, even with stitches, and you see, you see how natural and beautiful it is. The same girl, two months after, lateral view, frontal view, another example, you see some irregularities at, at the dorsum and we can control it and these irregularities can be controlled by using the remodeling after you position the, the, the tip, the, the dorsum. And one of the thing is, oh, in kephotic noses, you shouldn't use this, this kind of approaches. Look, this is a kephotic nose and you see the immediate results here. You see here the immediate results. You see how straight it is. You see frontal view, three quarters view, lateral view, and you see in the video that it's really beautifully designed, the line. This is the same thing, uh, kephotic nose and closed approach, the other one was open approach, and you see how beautiful the line is, and you see here the video, how stable, one year after surgery, everything is. Of course, it's been said that for in like cases like that, that in high radix, this is spectacular because you bring it down. So this is one of the, the, the good things about preservation. And this last case, just to show I preserved everything because I removed this piece of cartilage below the block and then I use it to structure my tip. In the end of the day, I end up with everything preserved. Dorsum, septum and the tip structure. So. This is my presentation. I thank you so much.